Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to learn about how you can create SharePoint agents. Additionally, we're going to learn how you can customize your SharePoint agent, tweak the instruction set. So when you tweak the instruction, how the response is going to change. And finally, we are going to learn about how you can share that SharePoint agent to a Teams group and you can start interacting with the agent. I hope you will find this video useful. Take care. All right, so to begin our lab, first go and create a SharePoint site. To do that, first I'm going to the m365.cloud.microsoft.com. So when you go there, you will be in a new landing page. Copilot would be in the front and center. If you scroll down, um, I will create a separate video on what the new app looks like and what are the options available. Now let's go to this app section. Click on apps. Within the app, you would be able to find all the Microsoft 365 application. So here we are going to select the SharePoint app. So click on that. That will take you to your organization's SharePoint. So you can, if you already have a site created, you can skip this step, directly go to the site to learn how you can use the agent or create an agent in SharePoint. For this particular lab, we are going to create a new site. So right at the top, top corner, you can see there is an option called create a site. So click on that. That gives you two options, team site and communication site. The team site is where you would keep documents and other artifacts which you want to collaborate within your team. The communication site is where you would create this for lots of people in your organization. Could be an HR site or a communication site, etc. So what we are going to do is we are going to create a team site. This allows you to pick different type of template. Templates is nothing but how you would like your team site to look like. I'm going to select a standard team site. Select that template and on the right hand side you can see how it is going to look like. So if I go back and select a different template you can see how it is going to potentially look like when you create it. So we're going to create a default one, select a standard one. And to use this one, you can click on use template. And first thing is you need to provide a name for your site. I'm going to call it as GTM team. I'm going to call it as HR and marketing site. You can call it whatever you want. Basically showing you how you can create a dummy site. Click next. You have an option to choose a sensitivity sensitivity allows you to add a particular sensitivity label on top of the site so all the permissions defined in that sensitivity will be automatically applied to the root site level so if you don't want to choose that select none privacy setting do you want to keep it public or private i'm going to keep it private at the moment we can look into other aspect of giving permission to different users later and you have an ability to choose what language you want this site to be displayed. I'm going to select English, create site. I can come in here and add a user. I'm going to add one member, additional member called Amber. And you can choose what level of access that particular user have. Similarly, you can go and add a group or individual users here. Click finish. And now you have your first site created. So if I go into the documents folder, you can see there are not any documents um, added. If I go to home, you can see the layout is quite bland and simple because we chose a simple template. So I have a folder where I have few documents here. I'm just going to open the documents. You can see there is a PowerPoint, documents, a PDF file and a couple of other documents as well. So I'm just going to simply copy go to the documents folder the first step is i can either copy drag and drop like this or you can simply go to this upload folder and click on either files or folder i'm going to select files point to a place where you have all the files select that and open so that's going to upload all the six files into this particular site now if you look at this particular site right at the top ribbon you can see there is a copilot icon so what does this mean so by default when you upload any document or when you create a site a copilot agent is by default created for a sharepoint site so you can always go to a particular sharepoint site 
if you have Microsoft 365 Copilot license or in your organization if you have enabled pay as you go for non copilot users they can always click on this and start interacting with this agent so now if I click on this um, a pop-up will open on the right hand side I'm just gonna expand it so that you can see it clearly it has some default prompts um, now you can ask question like hey summarize files when I do that it is going to look into all of these particular files and gonna get me a response so that's how I can interact with this particular agent so when I said summarize files it tells me hey this is a GTM team it has these six documents and it kind of gave me a quick summary on what these documents are and if you look at it towards the end of each response I have a citation here citation is nothing but a reference or a pointer to where this information is coming from so if I click on this whistleblowing procedures 5 it automatically opens that document um, where it got that information from so that's how um, the default copilot agent work so you don't have to do anything by default it is created for you next let me show you how you can create an agent for something for yourself very specific project oriented or it could be very unique to your particular work as well so how can you create an agent so to create an agent go to the site where you have all the documents select the documents which you, which you want to access so i'm going to select here one two three four five so let's see if i want to create a custom agent but if you want to select a few documents you can do that i'm just going to simply select all of that when you do that at the moment you can only select up to 20 items to create a specific agent but if you are creating more than 20 um, items it is going to throw you an error i'm sure we will increase the limit later on and then all you have to do is go to this button so if you look at my screen there is an option called create an agent here so if you click on create an agent that's gonna open a new window it is gonna first show you the name of the agent we haven't named the agent so it is gonna call a default new agent the most important thing is it is gonna highlight all the documents you have attached or added as a knowledge source to this agent so this agent is going to be rooted on these specific files you can either click on open an agent or you can start um, modifying it so i'm just going to click on open agent so by default the new agent almost looks similar to the default agent we opened in the particular site uh, the same type of prompt is what you can see here i can start uh, interacting with it if i ask summarize any key highlights it is going to scan through the entire knowledge source we attached and give me response based on uh, key highlights from all the six files we chose so that is good so now it is responding you know how to create a custom uh, build agent but what i want to show you is how you can fine tune the custom agent what you have built so if i close this window um, you can see that when you create a custom agent or a new agent by default that agent will be added to your document your document list because we didn't name this agent it is named as new agent dot agent you can always click here and you can go and edit to make further modification to the existing agent this is called fine tuning a sharepoint agent so i'm going to click on edit that opens the agent first i'm going to name the agent i'm going to call this as custom hr agent if you want to modify the purpose you can do that you can change the icon i'm just going to choose this icon and by default there is a purpose written based on the content in the future you will be able to modify this or fine tune this even further by going into copilot studio by clicking on this so now if you click on this it is going to show you further customization to copilot studio is coming soon so don't worry i will make a version 2 of this particular video once this particular feature is available i will add or create that video and attach to this so now the next thing is you can go to sources 
the sources tab in the this is where you would be able to configure the knowledge base of the agent right now it only allows you to add sharepoint site but soon microsoft is making changes here so that you will be able to add additional knowledge sources as well so keep an eye on this so right now if you want to add additional site or some other sharepoint site you can bring that here next i want to show you how you can modify the behavior or update the instruction so if you click on the third option called behavior that allows you to change the welcome message welcome message is what you see on the top of the um, agent second you will be able to modify the startup prompts startup prompts are what it is suggesting the user which they could potentially ask or the common asked questions and the third is the agent instruction this is where you can fine tune the tone behavior limitation rules and more for the agent basically this is where you can configure the system settings prompt for your agent the more accurate you are in this field the better result you will get back from the agent by default when you don't provide any of this information here you would see what you are seeing on the screen all this information will be pre-populated you will see a generic response but i would really encourage if you are creating a sharepoint agent fine-tune the instruction set over here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to first change the instruction by default if you don't do any changes uh, this is how the instruction set is what i'm going to do is i'm going to modify it um, I'm going to put a new instruction set. I'm going to copy this, sorry, delete this, put a new instruction set. You can see that it's quite descriptive now. I have system role. I say that, hey, you are an HR agent. Your goal is to help employees find information about HR policies, things like that. Then I have a section called main instruction um, inside that I have introduction prompt. Using following prompt to welcome the users to introduce your role. You're going to say that welcome to HR agent, blah, blah, blah. And how you should be responding to the user. Always use professional but friendly tone. General rules like never write personal or sensitive information while generating the answer. Do not allow the user to ask questions about other employees. And error handling in case of any error or issue. Inform the user the following prompt. I'm sorry, something wrong happened. Please try again soon. So this is quite descriptive and quite a lot of information very thorough this is how you would typically provide uh, the instruction set um, additionally you can come in here and modify the suggestive prompt as well so i'm going to ask let's ask some question which is part of this um, document what is so i'm going to ask a third question called what is whistleblowing procedures so if this is a common um, question or you want users to look into it rather than typing it, now when I modified the startup prompt, it automatically put that information here. So now if I go and click on save and close, the agent is going to behave slightly different. I'm going to close this, close this window. Now if I click on the custom HR agent, it should have the new instruction set, the new suggestive prompt. If I ask what is the whistleblowing procedure, it is going to give me a response based on the instruction I have given, like the formal, professional, friendly tone, and what that information is, uh, looking through the document, uh, etc. So let's test the agent to see if this is working. So what you can do is you can click on this ellipsis. Uh, that will allow you to either copy this and send it to someone via Teams, or you can uh, share it so they can access it or you can edit it or you can set it as approved we'll look into that later or click on new chat that's going to open a totally new chat so click on new chat so here i'm going to ask hello based on the instruction now you can see that there is a new response it's saying that hello and welcome to the hr agent so if i go to the default one let's go to the default one just going to copy this duplicate the same site but this time I'm going to click on the default one, which is the GTM agent. And here if I ask hello, because it doesn't have any instruction set, it is not 
designed to respond in a particular manner. Here you can see that, hello, this is a copilot here. What is the latest from manager? These are the default responses. But if I go to the agent, what we are working on, because my instruction was very clear on how you should be responding, um, you can see that there is a tailored response to this. Now, if I ask a question, how can I improve my career? Provide me a list of suggested actions. All right, so if you look at it, uh, the options are clearly laid out based on the information available in that document. The output is not quite important. We are not gonna spend a lot of time going through the output, but you can see that it's very clear and structured. I don't know how this is gonna respond if I ask the generic agent because I didn't give any uh, particular instruction on how to respond. I'm sure it is gonna look through the whole document set and it is gonna look and give me information. So you can see that the information, it did give me 10 point information, that is quite good. But if you compare that with the agent, what we created, now this is much better uh, in terms of where it is extracting, how it is presenting that information. It's all based on the instruction what we have given. So that is quite good. So now once uh, this is the best uh, agent what you created for uh, everyone within your organization if you want to make this as an approved one all you have to do is um, select the HR agent and click on the ellipses here and that opens this particular drop down and click as set as approved you can see site owners can choose to approve the agent so I am the site owner if you are not a site owner, you will not be able to make it as an approved site. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set as approved agent. Click OK and go to home or you just basically go to anywhere in that GTM team. It could be documents or anywhere. Now when I go to the copilot button here, the custom HR agent is the default one, even though you can access the other one. But when any user clicks on it, this will become the default go-to agent. Um, there are a couple of additional things you can do. Like I said, you can copy the link for Teams. And if I go to Teams, that allows me to share this agent with within a Teams group. And other people, if they have access, they can interact with it as well. So if I go to a user, um, I paste the link. Let's go to the agent, copy the link to the agent. And if I go to a chat and paste it, uh, you can see already when you paste it, instead of a link, it actually shows um, this as an agent and give a name, some description and things like that. Click next. Now it actually send this as an agent to someone. The other person can click on this agent and start accessing it. When they click on it, it opens in another window. They can access the agent directly from there. Like the experience will look like this. They can ask questions like, hey, what is the whistleblowing procedure or ask anything about the HR policies. Based on the knowledge source, it is going to respond back to them based on the instruction what the main administrator had set. That is good, straightforward. But additionally in Teams, what it allows is if I go and add this to a chat, the new custom HR agent is added to the chat. So now anyone can come in here and ask questions. Either you can click on the suggestive prompt here or during the conversation, I can put at the rate that allows me to call this and I can ask what's the hiring policy. And during the conversation with someone else, you can interact with the SharePoint agent within your Teams app. Here you can see the SharePoint agent, what we created, responded with the answer within the chat rather than going anywhere else. So that's another use case of creating an agent where you can make it as a default in a group chat so other people can start interacting as well. So whenever the response come in here, other participants in the same Teams group will be able to see the response as well. That is something you need to be mindful of. Um, that is where access permission and things will come in handy to look into governance aspect. I hope the information provided was useful. I will make a separate video as a version 2. Take care.